We don't even visualize the journey. See, if you go back to the text, these Greeks not only visualize the journey, but they made the preparations to go because what they did is in, they surrounded themselves with folk who already knew. Yeah. Yeah. They said, now, if y'all go, we certainly gonna go. You know the way. Yeah. We gonna go with you. It's going to the church. You, you, you got to be willing to not, not only get, get, get beyond Satan, just, just start thinking about victories that we can have. Uh, Jesus, or, or, or rather John, writes in John, in 1 John, the victories that we can discover. We don't understand the dynamics of victories. We want the Lord, Lord. I, Lord, I owe everybody, including our ass, fix that for me. If God fixed that, then, ooh, child, look what I did. <laughs> but I thought you said the Lord. Well, I, I prayed to him, but it, 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 I had to ask him three or four times. But I figured it out. I didn't figure it out. No. <laughs> the Lord did. That's right. Amen. Amen. He'll open the door. Yes. Paul talks about that in Corinthians. Paul said the Lord will open a, a factual, fervent door. Yeah. In other words, a door that no man can open. Yeah. God can open. Yeah. And yet when God does that, we take the credit. Mm -hmm. And we go tell all our friends. I got far off the cliff. I'm, I'm doing good now. And you know why you fall? Because you ain't doing like I do. The other side of that is when God opens the door, and, and Jesus says to himself, it's time for glory. In other words, we gotta learn to show some gratitude when God does yes. bless us. Yes. When, he, yes. when we get to the king and say, Lord, and show, we don't ever show any gratitude, but we sure know how to cry. Come on. Mercy. Mercy. <laughs> and gratitude is a lost virtue in yeah. this society. Yes, it is. Amen. 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 Don't even teach your children anything that gratitude is known. You can't afford it, but Johnny wants them uh, like mics. He wants them, he wants them shoes like mics. Two hundred and fifty dollars. You can't afford it, but he doesn't worry you. Where is you enough for you to you, know, you go get him? And he don't even lace them up. That's how much gratitude he has. Yeah, yeah. He walking around slashing around him. I mean, lace them up. <laughs> When God does, whatever it is he does, when it's the king that does it, where is the gratitude? Because it's God's grace. Yes. 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 Peter talks about God's grace. How he extends his grace even when we don't deserve it. God just extends it. Not one time, but over and over and over and over again. And yet, Recipients, yeah. we're not ready to show God any gratitude, but yet we'll have your audacity to say, Take me to well, the well, king. Well, if we want to go, we're going to have to understand the dynamics of virtue, of gratitude, yeah. of grace, yes. and then we have to learn to be obedient. Obedience is an absolute necessity. Why would you want to go if you're not going to obey? Mm -hmm. You're not going to obey. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy labor. I fit in that category. I don't know about you. He said, Lay 
and heavy laden. I'm under that. He said, if you come, I'll give you rest. Yes, sir. But here's what he said. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't stop there. You've been okay. He said, but take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I'm meek, you know, he said, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Are you there this morning? Think about that. You want to go see the king. We have a king that has extended to us the olive branch. And now it's up to us to take advantage of what he's extending. We can do that. We can do it this morning. Lord, I can, I can just sit standing with his arms open, waiting on us to make that decision. He said, the first thing that you must do if you come into the king is you got to hear. Listen to this. Mark 12, 29 says, Hear, O Israel, our Lord, our God, is one Lord. One Lord. one Lord. I know we got a lot of folks that say, well, you got two gods and I got none. Ain't but one of them. We either got the same or one of them don't have. And then if you hear that, the Bible says you must believe it. That's how you get faith. Mm -hmm. Romans 10, 17 says, so then, faith comes by what? Yeah. And hearing what? The word of God. And after you hear that, you must repent of your sins. God is just so good. See, that's what it is. Those who recognize that, they must repent. Repentance is not being contrary to God's will. Make up 360. And decide to do what God wants done. Hear and believe and repent. And then you must confess it. Confession shows how much courage you got. Jesus said, Whosoever confess me before me and him also I confess before my Father, which art in heaven. And he didn't stop there till he made a condition. He said, But if you do not, can you imagine those three getting up there and say, Well, you know what? We don't believe in Messiah. What you got up here for? <laughs> What's wrong? Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. Jesus said, Who said you confess me before me? And him also I confess before my father which are in heaven. That's conditional because he said, If you deny me before me, him also I deny before my father which are in heaven. And the final step. Your final step is well. I'm close my Bible now. Give you the final step. My time doesn't run out. You mind you got my back? All day long. All day long. Here's the final step, and we have to kind of build on this thing a little bit because I really want you to take this. The final step is baptism. Now, I, I know everybody that you ever meet that say they are religious, they have been baptized. They have. But it's, it's this way. If you haven't been baptized, how could you obey God? Now, I'm so oh, oh, oh. What do you mean, baptized right? I'm so glad you asked. I don't know. Well, well, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. I'd rather do the Bible than me. Amen. See, you can't do the Bible. Amen. In Jude, Jude is a little old thing, but just one chapter. But in Jude, chapter one, not but one chapter, Jude says, Love is written in me that I write unto you about the common salvation. Salvation. You, you, you know what common is? Common is what everybody does. And they do it the same way. You, you believe that? Common. All of us in here have common sins. Anybody here know? If I said, church, 
We got cups of samples of lemonade. I want you to taste it to see how sweet it is. How many of you would stick your fingers and say, oh, it's too sweet? <laughs> None of us. You know what we have to do? Because your taste buds is what's going to let you know whether it's too sweet or not. Right? Common sense be you. Anybody hear what they lay? And ears. God put that on everybody. So when Jude talks about common salvation, Jude is talking about what every one of us have to do alike. If I gotta hear, believe, pretend, confess, and be baptized, guess what? You gotta do it. All right. All right. I'm talking about you know, I had a religious experience. How you gonna have a religious experience? You ain't even religious. Come on now. How you gonna have that? You can't have a religious experience and you ain't religious. I ran down 20th Street and the back end of the car skidded, and I seen them buckling coming, and God spoke to me. You lying. God don't do that. You, you wait till you get ready to kill yourself. The street team. <laughs> Come on. Why would he do that? Come on. It would be unjust to wait till you get ready to kill yourself. The, the, the holler that you coffee, you a fool. No! You know what that is? That's your conscience. That's your conscience who know that you're not right. Your conscience. That's why people say, and my life passed before mine. It might have did, but you can't catch up with it. How come you didn't stop it in the middle? It sounds facetious, but that's true. When God speaks, he speaks to me. Yes, yes. Here's something else that I know we scared to death to touch. And I'm going to tell it now. Come on, tell it now. Come on, tell it now. If you serve God, if you go to the king, you serve him, then the spirit of God Come on. will challenge you. Yes. When you get in situations you're not supposed to be in. Yes. The problem is, even when it challenges, if you have decided to do it, God will move out of the way to let you act the fool. All right. All right, man. All right. That's right. That's right. And he ain't going to tell you and say, oh, no, Jeffrey, help. Holy Spirit, I'm ready. Jeffrey, please don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Jeffrey's mind is set on acting a fool. God will say, come on, Holy Spirit, let Jeffrey go act the fool. We got, uh, we got bigger fish to fry. So if you're here this morning, I'm through. If you're here this morning, I want you to consider something. I want you to consider something. First of all, I want to appreciate you for your attention as I try to share with you God's word. But I want you to consider this. Let's take this back yes. and make this thing little. And let's say, in fact, you do want to go to see me. Okay? Right. You know how those Greek were? They went and said, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. In other words, Jesus wasn't where they were. All right. They wanted to be taken to Jesus. Now, now let's say, let's say that's your attitude this morning. I tell you what, don't don't don't, don't start it. Stand up. Everybody stand up. Because you won't stand up anyway, don't you? 